okay. So yesterday we talked about a number of things. Huh? We talked about uh, uh, um, the, the, the things that you should do even before you start the meta meditation. At least you have those things in mind. Huh? You reflect on the on the um, the benefit of patience and the dangers of anger. You know? uh, so, if some of you are very new to to this type of meditation, uh, and also being new to Buddhism, also, <coughs> then um, one of the things is that metta is to help us to release and also to reduce to reduce our anger and our hatred and finally to keep it away for a long period of time uh, th that it, it can be very helpful in our everyday lives and also in our endeavor in our spiritual development uh, our so that we can able to get out of this cycle of birth and rebirth so the whole purpose of this meta, as I said again, is to help you, to support you, that in future, that when we go into a more deeper cultivation, then this meta will be very supportive. But if you do this meta just for everyday happiness on here, then that will be a, in a way, it will not go far. You're just happy on here in this very life, you know. But or the next life, but it will not kind of like touching on the spiritual development, a deeper spiritual development. Uh, so my whole purpose here is to hopefully to bring you deeper into it. Now, yesterday also I talked about the meta about uh, what are the lines that you should go through. You know, some of the lines that you should go through. Tonight I'm going to elaborate more. Because I think that yesterday may I may not able to cover it completely. So tonight we're going to look into the walking and sitting again and we're going to elaborate a little bit more. Hmm? So now let's go into the sitting right now. Yeah? We're going to the sitting and we're going to look into how perhaps in that one hour, how are we going to do that particular sitting with meta? Hmm? <clears throat> okay, let's see. Where's my screen sharing? All right. Hold on now. Let me see. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Eh, mana pergi? Stop, stop. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's my this one? Okay. Screen share again. All right. Now, can y'all see? Okay, can see, yeah? Good. Now, yesterday, I spoke about something like this. But tonight, I'm going to elaborate a little bit more than, than, uh, than what I mentioned yesterday. Huh? Now, yesterday, as I said, that we look into all these words, Okay. We look into all these words. May I be free from harm, all from all harm and danger. Now, yeah, okay. Now tonight we're going to look into this one further. We're going to look into the sitting meditation. Yeah? Now here, sitting meditation. Uh, as I said, that there's also two parts of it, just like walking meditation, but mostly we're going to do on metta. When do you bring back the mind just on mindfulness? Uh, that also. Afterwards, we're going to discuss a, lot, a little bit on it. Uh, usually, this mindfulness, when we want to build up upon this meta, then sometimes if you don't do walking meditation, uh, so you don't do walking meditation, you need to want to do sitting on meta only, then a little bit of mindfulness has to come in before you start the meta. It will be very good. Uh, then how we do this mindfulness thing? When we put out here mindfulness things, uh, make sure that this is not vipassana. You know? This is mindfulness. Because as I said, you need this mindfulness for 
any form of samatha or vipassana meditation. It's the starting area. Yeah? So anything that you want to start, you must have mindfulness first before you talk about all other form of meditation. Mm? Uh, so at least you must know how to bring about that mindfulness. Yeah? Usually in the sitting meditation for metta, normally, if I were to say, you know, in an easy manner, then this uh, uh, metta will be kind of, sorry, with this mindfulness, is kind of like being aware of the whole body present here. Just like you, you sweep from the top of the head, you gently go down to the buttock and you feel the body is here. Now, sometimes you do it after a few a number of times. If the mind able to calm down, then sometimes you can feel the hands that you are touching. For example, you put it together in your palms. Or sometimes you may, you may feel the buttock that is touching on the, on the, on the, ground, on, on the ground or on the cushion. Uh, then when you able to notice that those things... Uh, these are mindfulness. You haven't gone into vipassana yet. And this is only mindfulness. Although in the vipassana, we start off with that also, you know. But a lot of time people thought that this is already going into vipassana. No, not yet. You are only mindful. Only. <clears throat> mindfulness, when it goes into vipassana, there is more precision noting during in that particular sitting. But in the general part of it, it's more like you're able to feel your sensation, you're able to feel your buttock, you're able to feel your heat around you, you can feel your posture, that is the body is erect or slightly bent. Now, that is mindfulness. You know, your presence of the mind is there. Uh, and also the mind is not just present, but it's slowly being heightened up uh, in that sense. That's why, as I said, now, when you register for my this one, uh, last I asked you whether you have gone through at least ten talks in the past or not, because the past ten talk or the past talks uh, not only the ten but in the past talks, I talk a lot about mindfulness. I talk a lot of mindfulness. I talk a lot of other things. Now, is that understanding those things? If we want to blend it everything together in a meditation practice. Yeah. So that's why I said those are the, those are important for you to go through also when I talk about the noble eightfold path and the four noble truths because all those things I mentioned here and there, yeah. but all those things is just knowledge, yeah. but we cannot consolidate them together that much la. it's all going through knowledge you know, yeah. but now is when you come into the practice we're going to apply them. Yeah as best as we could. Huh? Now, so if you have this mindfulness, then <clears throat> you're going to do metta. Yeah? Now, even, uh, let's say you have done your walking meditation, then the number one uh, for mindfulness, uh, you don't have to do it also. You can straight away go to metta already. Hmm? If you have done some walking meditation in metta, of the first one. Later part, we're going to discuss further on this also. So the sitting meditation, uh, if your mind, you feel that it from the walking, you feel that the momentum has already built up, then good. Then straight away, you go into metta. Okay? Now, now when you go into the metta, when you go into the metta, okay, now this is something, as I said yesterday, that those words that you use, you have to have a lot of, there must be a lot of sincerity in those words, not just lip service. And that, again, to remind you when you say, or when you recite mentally, may I be free from harm and danger. You truly wish yourself to be free from harm and danger. Not just a mental lip service, a mental service, and they just go through the line, go through the next line, go through the next line, but inside your heart, all kosong, inside your heart, all nothing. Yeah. Empty. So you've got to learn to feel those words. What do you mean in your own understanding? What is the harm and danger to you? Yeah. But then, make sure that even this harm and danger, you don't turn it into 
fear and so on, you know. May the COVID don't come to me. Harm and danger, ma. Then I say, if the COVID, may the COVID don't come to me. This is more like your fear. This is not like your... <laughs> this, is not, this is not meta anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't... Sometimes, a lot of times, a lot of our defilements are, are masking and we think that it is all meta. No, no, no. Yeah. This one is that you you sincerely wish yourself in everything to be free from harm and danger. To be is a wish, yeah. Uh, not it is, you know. It's a wish. Uh. Uh. Last time, um, last time I, I heard somebody said, "Why may I be well and happy? Right now I'm well and happy already. Why for I want to say may I be well and happy?" You know, I'm already happy already. Why, why, so why, why want to may I be well and happy again? It is not, metta is not about whether it's a statement. Metta is a wish. Yeah? Metta is a wish. Okay? It's a wish that you spread the metta, to spread that loving kindness, to spread that friendly nature of the mind, to spread that softness of the mind, yeah? Sometimes they call it the generosity of the heart. You know, sometimes like Joseph Goldstein, they, they use the word generosity of the heart for metta. Uh, so you kind of like you have a share it with yourself, you share with others. Uh, so, so this one, the, the word, you have to be sincere and you have to be truthful to yourself and to others. That means you truly mean it, yeah. Not to hold on to the image, and we'll talk about that in a short while. Okay, now we we'll go on a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more on the sitting. Eh? <clears throat> now, when we do the sitting, normally we do here. Hopefully, you all can see. Eh? I want to put the whole thing in one together. So now it's a bit small. Eh? So hopefully, your eyes are not so blind. Eh? We all can see. Good. Now, when normally when we start, okay, normally when we start, it will be good that to wish yourself to be free from harm and danger, free from all mental suffering, free from all physical suffering, and may I truly be happy, or may I, you can use, or may I be peaceful, be well, and be happy. Also can, it's up to you. Yeah? Uh, this is my... These lines, as I said, these lines, they are meaningful to me. They are meaningful to me. Hopefully, it also will be meaningful to you. So when I say, may I be free from all mental suffering, I know what is mental suffering. I know what is anger. I know what is anxiety. I know what is uh, tension of the mind and pressure. And that, well, that one is more physical, but it's more like restless and jealousy and those things. Uh, those are called mental suffering. Uh, uh, and then, what is physical suffering? Again, here I can understand it because physical suffering is like my sickness, my pain, my this and that. Physical suffering. Okay? Uh, then, um, <coughs> may I... Um, May I truly be happy and may I be well and peaceful. Here, you wish yourself to be well and peaceful. As if like sometimes you may have, sometimes some people, they kind of like, in the minor, they kind of like looking back at themselves, you know, that they are sitting there. Okay, may, they be f may, may I be free from harm and danger. May I truly be happy or be well or be peaceful. So here, with this one, uh, with these four lines, uh, then you do it like uh, two or three times. Uh, you do it two or three times. Or you can do more also if you wish to. Uh, you can do more if you wish to. Okay? Uh, then, <clears throat> then after that, and after that, you go through to a person that is respected to you. If, if you have one, uh, hopefully you can find one. Uh, 
it would be good. Uh, those person that is respected to you, uh, then you wish the person to be free from harm and danger. Again, you have to mean it. You have to truly sincere about your words. Uh, uh, then you go through the four lines again. You do it two or three times. Now, the one that in the respected ones, uh, sometimes we are thought that to imagine his face and so on. And then some people thought that uh, you must imagine the face and then you want to hold on to the face or hold on to the person as a mental image. You know? So here you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Uh, sometimes the image may appear to you fine and well and good. And the, if the image disappear, let it go. But you know that you know the person because it is the person is known to you. And when you know the person, all you need to do is radiate to the person. Don't have to be able don't have to imagine the person uh, strongly. Because of that, now sometimes there are some yogis when they do this meta, then that image is more important than the words, you know. And then the image is more important than the words. Then slowly, slowly, the meta starts to disappear. Okay? So you don't hold onto the image too much. Uh, the image also, when it comes to, for example, like the people around you or the state or country or the world or all, all existence, uh, sometimes, uh, you see, when you go into this, the, late, the next one and the further one, uh, then for some people, again, for some yogis, uh, you do not able to feel these people anymore. Yeah? Because it's kind of like very vague. You do not know them already. It's more like you're touching on the neutral person already. You know? But some can do it. Some because they have perhaps in the past they have done some meta. Then to them, uh, these people, they can do it. But the newer ones, uh, they find it very difficult to do it because this is not something you can hold, you can touch. It's everything in the mind or near. Something very conceptual in here. So it's not easy for them to able to, to grasp the meaning. Uh. Yeah. But if you tell them to give them a respected ones, uh, or uh, you, you have an honorable ones, uh, uh, then with that, uh, when they feel that, oh, that person is real, at least conceptually, like it's the person is real to you. And then when it's real to you for a beginner, it's easier to, to bring the meta out from there. Uh, but if you have already starts to develop further, huh, uh, then this one, the being people around you or the in the state or country or in the world and so on, huh, and it's getting it will get better and better. Yeah? Uh, so it, it, it needs a little bit of imagination also, but not too much, huh? because this is still a very conceptual thing. Huh? Now, here, the words itself, huh, when you are doing this thing, okay, the meta has to be all-encompassing. That means, huh, when you are looking at a sick person or whether you are looking at a harmful person or whether you are looking at your respected ones, uh, they are all at the same tone, you know, when, when there's real metta, when there's proper metta, you know. The metta that you wish to them uh, is that may you be free from harm and danger. Is that you don't really look at whether they are suffering or whether they are hostile to you or whether they are your loved ones to you. you know. it's, it's all, metta is finally, it's all about you can able to touch them. Sh uh, you, you can able to bring out that wish, your your sincere wish uh, to all of them in the same tone, in the same frequency. Uh, usually, for example, some people are now, uh, is that, for example, when they say, now is a COVID, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, and, and they say, uh, may all these people with uh, COVID, uh, may they be free from all kinds of all their harm and danger. 
Whereas when you do that, uh, as I said, it is not wrong. It's still a good wish. But it is not metta. It is already turning into karuna. Because that time, you are focusing on the suffering of others. When you are looking into the suffering of others, then when you want to generate the heart, uh, may you be free from all the suffering. And that means when you do that, your mind is coming out with compassion. So there is a difference in the line, you know. There's a difference in the line between metta and compassion. Whereas compassion, you are looking into the suffering. And all beings, one way or another, suffer, whether mentally or physically. Yeah? But in metta, we don't look into the area of whether he suffer or not. We look in the everything of the person or the being itself. Whether the being is harmful to you or the being is kind to you, whether the being is big or small, whether the being is sick or healthy, there's no, we are not looking into that area. We are looking into overall of the person or of the being. Then we spread that, that minor, then that is metta. Okay? So something like this. Huh? Okay. Now we go back to this one. May you be or may he be she. Okay, now you do a two or three times. Let's let's learn to feel it. You know, you learn to feel to sh to to bring about the meta to the person. Now after that, it would be good that you can try You know, bring to the people around you. People that means uh, here could be your loved ones or so. You know, but you don't go and specifically point it to the person. You know? It's more like a general. You take them as general. You take them as general. Including perhaps the the neighbor that you don't like also. You also include la in general also, you know. <laughs> Everything is general. Uh, so you include them that people around you. Or, and also the beings around you. Perhaps also the beings also. You don't see. It doesn't mean that it's not there. So you don't forget to spread the Meta to them also and to the animals also. That means whatever beings around you, whatever beings around you, you share your meta with them. You spread the meta with them. Yeah? Uh, so sometimes during in my guided meta, I specifically mention these things. If not some yogis, uh, as I said, may all beings around us, uh, all beings say hamilai, all beings, what is all beings? <laughs> So sometimes the specificness of it, uh, it makes things much clearer. So if it's clearer to you, then if it's good that during in your practice, you make this one clear to you. But sooner or later, but later, when you get better and better and better, uh, you don't have to like, may all, may all of them, may all the, may all the devas or the petas or may all the insects. Uh, later, uh, you just say, May all beings around here. You understood the meaning completely already. Then you don't have to go and so many words. Uh, you, know? you want to simplify things further and further as the meta progress. Uh, so as you know it, you don't have to think about them. You know that because you are doing it again and again, you familiar yourself with these things already. Uh, uh, so again, now when you say that may all people and beings around you, you are going to spread to push the, the meta wider, uh, to touching to all of them. Uh, so again, you do two or three times or four times or more. Yeah? Then, the next one, you want to go bigger. Sometimes, uh, some, some yogis, they like to do it like, um, they want to go bigger in the sense that they don't want to touch the country or the state yet. You know? They want to uh, uh, cover the whole neighborhood, the bigger neighborhood. Yeah. You know? Then after that, they go into state. Then they go into state and they cover into more states. And more states, they cover into more until the whole country. Kind of like they slowly, slowly, they progress from there on. Yeah? Also can. It's not a problem. So here, I make it in a sense that at least to show you that there an, there's an expansion of the meta. Yeah? The expansion of the meta. So here I put there, may they or the people and beings in this state or in the country be free from all harm and danger. And then again, slowly, slowly, you go through the lines. Two or three times. Yeah? You go two or three times. 
for that lines. So you are going, going to do quite a lot, you know. Yeah? The lines are the same, but it's just the beings are kind of like you have get the getting more and more. Uh, then ag again, after that, you wish the, the beings and the people in the world to be free from all kinds of harm and danger. Uh, uh, usually, you can able to expand it further and further. Uh, two or three times again. Uh, so just now, for example, when I used, uh, during in the guided, I used, may all beings in this world able to live in peace and in harmony with themselves and with others. Uh, that is also a form of metta because those words are meaningful to me. Those words are meaningful to me when I able to feel that I can able to spread the metta using those words to them. <clears throat> now, after that, it will be good that no? we have to try to have may all beings from all the realms from existence. Uh, that means, at least uh, you must know the 31 realms of existence, you know. You know the 31 realms of existence that, uh, you know, in the past Dhamma talk also, during in the Third Noble Truth also, they are talk about there are different realms of existence and then we talk about uh, what are the highest devas to the lowest uh, beings. And then here, when we talk about the all realms of existence, uh, then as if like your mind is able to touch all of them without exception, without condition. Uh, uh, so all, all of them. So you go through again two or three times, two or three times. Yeah? Per sitting, you know, per sitting. Now, after you do this, uh, after you do this, then you go through these few rounds already, then you feel uh, that you, today, uh, my sitting, uh, I felt that um, the I one, uh, the I and the respected ones is stronger. Okay? That means the first one and the second one uh, is stronger than the people around me, the state, the country. Now, if that one has no imp not much of this one, uh, then here, what you can do is that you begin to delete them. Yeah? You get what I mean? Uh, meaning that uh, after a while, just now you go through all this, this one, now you just repeat, may I, then after that, may you, or may he, or may she, may he say. Then you go through these two sets only, you know, and you repeat again and again in these two sets. Okay? You repeat and repeat again in these two sets. You, you follow what I mean? Uh, that means uh, you're getting to you begin to simplify the the radiation and then you forget about others you know you forget about others because that that time uh, that particular meta is not impact on you but uh, for a particular sitting uh, uh. then after that let's say for that particular sitting after you sat for a while uh, after you do this too your the your respected one and may I you feel that Today, uh, the may I one uh, feels stronger. I feel that today one uh, compared to this, this one. Then after that, you eliminate again. Uh, you eliminate again. Then only, only one object right now. But you still have four lines, you know. You still have four lines. Then after that, you go through this again. Now, things will be getting a little bit more. It's going to be a lot of repetition. Uh, yeah? Now, it's going to be a lot of more repetition, more and more. So, after that, what do you do? After that, hey, I'm, I'm talking quite far. I mean, I'm, don't expect that what I'm going to talk uh, is going to happen in one sitting. You know? This one uh, is happen in when you have more sittings to come. Uh, you know? Usually, what I'm going to say is that, what, what I'm trying to say is that, Finally, is to simplify everything. Uh. The metna only, you know, finally, you know. We're going to simplify everything, but we've got to go in step by step in order to make the metta prolong. Yeah? Uh, then, if you feel that the I 
only yourself, it's really good. Then you just maintain on the eye and you repeat again and again and again and again. Yeah? Now, if on an, if today you feel that the eye not so strong and just now the venerated one is strong to you, then you forget about the eye and you for, then the venerated one, you just spread to him or to her only. Same thing, same thing. Eh? It's just the same thing. Now, now after that, when you go repeat this four times, uh, then if you find that, uh, um, may I be free from harm and danger, uh, it's not so strong compared to the other three lines. Then you delete some more. Uh, yeah? Now it become three only. Then you become three only. Then you go, you go on to this one and this one. Then if you find that, uh, today one, uh, again, after a while, you don't go, then you delete further. Uh. You delete further. This one, let's say the the mental and physical suffering is a little bit more. Then you delete further. Then, if everything comes, then you further delete. Uh. You further delete until you have only one line of all the lines that you are going to go through. You know? And all the lines that you're going to go through. And finally, that, that one line, uh, and you repeat again and again to make that meta continuous. Yeah? To make that meta continuous. Yeah? Then, if you're getting much more better, on a more of a much more better, and that means your concentration, mindfulness has developed, uh, then finally, uh, even this line also. We, de we delete also only the meta only without words anymore. You understand what I mean? The words itself uh, is to help to bring the meta only. You know? It's just like when we do vipassana, we have labeling also. Finally, you're getting better. Uh, we slowly and slowly drop the labeling, drop the rising, drop the falling, drop the lifting, uh, pushing and drop. We slowly drop the labeling only the mind and the object only at that time of vipassana. So to the same thing in metta, that when you're getting better and better, finally, it's the lines that we're going to eliminate everything. <coughs> only in the <coughs> only in the metta only. And the metta is going to be continuous at that time. Say it's easy, you know, say it's easy. Listen to it is easy, but in reality, what will happen is that the hindrances will still kind of poke you here and there. You're going to have a lot of thinking after sleepy and all that thing. It's not going to be easy to achieve blank, I mean, without the words here. Yeah? So it's not easy. Yeah? So it's not easy. Yeah? <clears throat> then, as I said, when you cannot, if the hindrances come back again and disturb you, eh, then again, you've got to bring back the lines again. You've got to bring back the lines again. Then you have to make sure that the lines to help you to stay with the metta. It's just like when you are doing vipassana, it's the same thing. When you're thinking sleepiness again, uh, then you bring back your labeling again in order to keep the mind on the object. <clears throat> Same thing. If you know how you have done vipassana before, then metta is something like this also. Yeah. If those who have done me, uh, vipassana with me and also have done other places, you know, this is what we do. We slowly drop the labeling. These are all labeling, but this labeling in metta it has to be meaningful to you. And then it brings about that meta. So when the meta arises stronger and stronger, then we drop all these lines slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly until we drop them everything. Okay? So far, you're, you're clear? But in the meantime, uh, don't, don't go and be too a hero. La, you know? Wait, uh, hold on first. Just, just go for, just go all first. Make sure you go all because you never know at that particular day or uh, sometimes at that particular sitting. Sometimes that, that particular day, 
may all beings from all realms of existence without exception, uh, that one become very powerful to you. Uh. Then the may I, may our respected one are uh, all, all not so powerful. Then you got to eliminate all of them. Then you keep that one. And then again, you're getting less and less. And some other sittings, uh, the people in the state, in the country may be more impactful to you. you so you just never know which one is good. So when you got to learn to to feel the meta as you go along. Uh, but nevertheless, when you do all these five, uh, so that at least you are familiar with, with at least, you know, your mind is familiar with them. That's why we say all the five, it is good that you go through. Yeah? In the beginning part, I know it's difficult for you even to stay with, uh, even to finish the words also, may I be free from harm. And uh, Tonight what I'm going to eat? Uh, then after that you think about what you're going to eat, oh, oh, no, 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 may I be free from all mental suffering. And then before you finish, the, you want to go the next line, you'll be thinking of what you're going to, even the four lines you're going to go through, uh, you can have a lot of thinking around there uh, for a lot of people. Uh, so, it's, it's not as easy, it is. Uh, so that's why, uh, that's why the hindrances part, uh, all the thinking part, it can be reduced if there's mindfulness. If there's no mindfulness, uh, you don't even realize that you are gone into all kinds of your hallucination, thinking, planning, memory, and so on. So the mindfulness is the one to help you to protect the mind. So when it protects the mind, the mind metta can be able to develop. So the mindfulness is important. So I don't see, I, I don't know why people don't, don't, you don't think about that mindfulness is so important for metta. So here I want to drill it into all of you that, that the mindfulness is equally as important as what you're going to do because this mindfulness is your foundation. It's really a foundation for a lot of development. Okay? Now, so this one hopefully is clear to you. Then the next thing, what I'm going to share a little bit more is this. The speed of the mental recitation. Okay? Now, the speed of the mental recitation. What do you mean by the speed? The speed here is that when you go through your lines in your mind, when you go through your lines in your, you know, you say, may I be free from harm and danger. How fast do you want to go? How slow you want to go? Yeah, that also can help you to calm the mind down. So now, here, Normally, it would be good that you do it. Let's say there's now the mind, let's say it's not affected by thinking and not affected by, by uh, uh, sleepiness and so on. Uh. Uh, then you go in a gentle phase. A gentle pay, uh, uh, a gentleness in this one, uh, that means uh, it is not too fast and not too slow. And at the same time, the meaning, your meaning is clear to you. Right, the meaning is clear to you. If you just just run through, may I be free from harm and danger? May I be well? May I be free from na 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 na? Then you you don't the meaning has no the the meaning of the words doesn't impact you. So sometimes you need to go gentle a little bit, not too fast, not too slow. That the meaning has some impact on the mind or in the heart area, and then it will be good. Uh, okay. So this one, again, you've got to find in your own mind how fast you want to go or how slow you want to go. Uh, so sometimes if you go too slow, then after that energy also habits. Then you may I be free. Then you sleep really by the time you, before you get into suffering or so on. Yeah? So not too slow and not too fast. So that one, not too fast, not slow. Okay. Then the second thing is this. Now this one is when your when your hindrances you know that slightly gonna come in already. You know that there's a little bit of thinking here, thinking there. This time you go slightly faster. Even you go slightly faster than your gentle mental face. Huh? Then here your meaning must still be there. 
is the meaning part, the metta as it arises. Huh? That metta, because it's a wholesome mind, and also because the mindfulness is a wholesome mind, then it will keep the drowsiness and the restless mind and the five hindrances away. Yeah? So you can go slightly faster on the mental recitation also. If, when there's, when there's drowsiness and so on. Uh, when the mind is clear from all the drowsiness or restlessness or the hindrances, then again, you go back to the gentle phase. And then with that, then you slowly, slowly, you like, like you eliminate and so on, you know, then things get better. Yeah? So this is the speed of this mental recitation. Okay? So, so hopefully, hopefully on this sitting, uh, uh, it would be good that you can sit for one hour or a little bit more because you are doing at home if you can. But if you are beginner, zero <laughs> beginner without without much of a background in vipassana or in samatha or any form of meditation, try half an hour first, uh, because half an hour uh, the bum is going to become painful already, or the knees will become painful already. <laughs> yeah. So so even the this time the pain as it comes up, uh, you don't go and look into the pain. This is not vipassana. Yeah? Now you you try you have to be patient. Sometimes you've got to let the pain stay there for a while. You make sure that your mind turn into metta again and again. Yeah? Yeah. But this, this one, uh, make sure that you don't go and attach to the metta because next time when you do vipassana again, uh, the pain comes in, uh, why you go turn back to? <laughs> You're going to turn back to metta. Then that will be a big problem. <laughs> There are some people in the during the vipassana meditation, uh, they come to the pain. Uh, may you be free from harm and danger. May you be free from all the f suffering. The siawa, you know, you're really crazy. You're going to wish your pain to be free from suffering. Uh. This is not the not the time for you to do that. <laughs> Some people cannot take the pain already. They start radiating metta during vipassana. You know, no, you are not supposed to do that. Metta is for living beings, <laughs> not for your pain. <laughs> Although the, the person who is painful is in suffering, uh, you know, but not directly to the pain. Uh. <laughs> and and during vipassana, we don't go and do something like that because you are going to corrupt everything. You are mixing up everything. Uh. So. This is what I'm trying to say. Okay? Okay. Next thing. We're going to go into walking meditation. And the walking meditation, I'm going to go a little bit more also compared to yesterday. Yeah? Okay. Let me see. All right. Again, yesterday, I said that this walking meditation, again, is divided into two types. Yeah? The, the mindfulness part and the metta part. Yeah? So, so those who are you do do not know how to do medi walking meditation. Uh, just just a guide to make sure your eyes is about six or six feet in front of you or two meter. Your hands are not swinging. Either it's folded up or grabs in front or grabs behind or put in the pocket also if you have two pockets at the side. Uh, as long as your hands are not swinging, keep your keep your eyes downcast and don't look at all your uh, beautiful things in your house. You know, this is very tem tempting. Uh. Uh, uh, look! Don't don't walk! Don't walk near a TV, uh, and somebody is watching TV. So don't don't you don't do that. <laughs> Find somewhere more peaceful if you have the place, uh, You know, again, I have very hard for me to say what 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 sort of what sort of house or home do you have? You know, but this is the general thing that usually when we do walking, hands are not supposed to swing here and there, eyes down class. So when you start walking, you start with a gentle pace. Now, a gentle pace means it's, it's slightly slower than your everyday walking. Yeah? Like you kind of like take time to breathe like that. Yeah? Take time to, like when you go into a park, uh, you, you slowly take your time in walking in a park like that. Huh? Not like you are in a shopping mall that you have a discount on and you want to grab everything. One, that one is, that one is like mad person. You know? This one is more like gentle, relax. Then you walk. Then you find that gentle pace of that walking. So it's like uh, everyday walking, but 
the speed is less. So that is what we call a gentle pace. Yeah? Or if you are doing um, vipassana meditation before, then this speed is like a one phase speed, you know. Okay, like a one phase speed that you do. Okay, not too fast and not too slow. That usually here the mind can able to follow the movement of the body. Okay. Then the next thing is this. Sometimes you may want to do a brisk walk, then you slow down to a gentle pace. Okay? Sometimes because of your, perhaps you have just finished your dinner, maybe you just finished your lunch, maybe you just, you just finished your office work, you know, you want to have a, a, a quick walk first, a quick walk just to relax the body, exercise the body a bit, get the body a little bit uh, uh, loosened up, you know, and then you want to go into a more gentle phase. Okay? Now, what are we going to do with the gentle phase? After slowly, I'm going to talk about it. Yeah? Uh, so, after that, when the mind is calmer, you know, when the mind is calmer, after you walk for a while, maybe 10, 15 minutes or so, or 20 minutes or so, then if you find that your mind is not running here and there that much already, your, your mind is more controllable, then this time, you go into a slower phase slower than the gentle phase. Uh, that means uh, slightly things are getting more slower a little bit. Like when you are doing a two or three phase in the Vipassana meditation. The speed is something like that. Just to give you the idea. Alright? So, so a lot of you are doing Vipassana uh, uh, walking meditation before and this is what I meant. Uh, the second phase or the third phase type of speed. So what do we do in the walking meditation? Again, it's the same thing, but this one, walking meditation, you got to have, it's quite different from, slightly more different from the metta, because the metta, the slightly different from the sitting, because the sitting has more, much more metta compared to mindfulness, because you are supposed to arouse that mindfulness in the walking. Now what do you do in the walking? Let me show you. In the duration of your walking, including standing, uh, now in the duration means uh, your time. For example, uh, example if you st you stand there for, you st for one hour or roughly about fifteen minutes or so, uh, so up up to about fifteen minutes or so or to, towards one hour, for a beginner that would be good for you. Yeah? So what do you do? There are few levels of walking meditation that we can do. First, if you are a completely new beginner, you have not have done metta before and you have not done this one uh, walking before, it will be encouraged that you do number one and also number two like that. 100% yeah? mindfulness, 0% metta on the walking. Yeah? You build up yourself first. Then the metta you build up in the sitting. You don't build up in the walking. Walking, you build up from mindfulness. So this, what, what I mean the 100% mindfulness is that you go from your gentle phase, then you go into a slower phase. Yeah? Say, let's say you can keep that for 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and then one hour already. No? So sometimes you may do like 15 minutes, 15 minutes, or 20 minutes, or 15 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour. Because this mindfulness partner it's going to be very helpful if you slow down. If you go faster, sometimes the mindfulness and the concentration cannot settle. So you need somewhat slow. But here, you must be careful if you are a Vipassana meditator is that naturally the, the mind will tend to pull itself back to Vipassana. You're going to start to pick up little, small, small little things already. You know? So that time, you got to hold your mind back again, just keep the mind in the slowest speed, but just keep it with the mindfulness. Now, sometimes if you want to keep it with the mindfulness, it is also good that sometimes you're aware of the whole body, the body from the leg, whole leg, you know, the whole leg walking or the thigh area or the or the hip area or buttock area and you feel that how the buttock is swinging left and right, in the slow walk or how the shoulders is moving. Those are mindfulness. 
And those are very good mindfulness, actually, because the object is big. When, as, when we, that time when we say that the mindfulness needs prominent object, mindfulness needs big object. Now, in that big object, you feel the, 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 the whole body or they feel the, the larger area. Then the mindfulness comes in. Not to say that the even the lift the steps, uh, if the steps is not able to bring mindfulness, yes, it, it can bring mindfulness too. But since a lot of you are doing uh, vipassana in the past, uh, then you may tend to go into. It, it will be very easy for you to go into vip, vipassana. So in order not to go into vipassana and to maintain mindfulness, then sometimes it's good just to shift to uh, other objects you know, in the body the secondary objects of the body, then it helps you to keep the mindfulness around. So 0% metta uh, for the first one. That, that will be good for beginners to meditate. Yeah? Uh, then, uh, sometimes also, sometimes also, even for myself also, sometimes if the days are not so good, uh, sometimes also when I meditate, also walking meditation, 100% mindfulness. 0% metta. Then only sitting, and then we do a little bit more on metta. Yeah? Then after that, number two. Number two is like 70% agak aga la, you know, this one uh, roughly la, you know, 70% mindfulness, 30% metta. So this 30% metta is during in the time you are standing meditation. Yeah? So as I said, when you're doing this walking, you take about 10, 15 steps. You go, Right to the end, you stand there. When you stand there, make sure that you don't, don't look here and there around your house or around your garden. Yeah? So keep your mind again two, or th uh, two meters in front of you or five or six feet in front of you. And then that time, uh, or even, even you want to close the eyes also, it's fine for meta. But sometimes for some people, they close the eye, then the body cannot stand, cannot stand still. So they need sometimes the eyes to be opened a little bit. So it's up to you. Uh, so during this time, when the 30% meta of the time, this is 30% of the time, you know, not, I mean, not, the, not just to do 30% of, of uh, earlier part when we talk about the words of meta. So here 30% means uh, the time that you are standing. Then you stand there, you can stand there a little bit longer. So you stand there for like, say, two minutes or three minutes or four minutes or five minutes, you know, if you can stand. Uh, then you read it. May I be free from harm and danger. May I be free from all mental suffering. Sometimes you may do only two sets, sometimes three sets. Uh, then if you feel good already, then you turn again to your path again Then you start walking on mindfulness. Just right step, left step, right step, left step. Uh, then you go on. Uh, so this is how you can gradually build up okay and then you go to the other end you stand again you don't look here and there then you again you radiate the meta to yourself and to other people uh, uh, then after that if you find that your things are getting better uh, then here you go 50% mindfulness and 50% meta 50% mindfulness here is when you are going into like your first phase, you do about 50%. Yeah? And 50%, after that, when you go into a slower phase, like when you go into a second phase or third phase type of slowness, uh, that less than your gentle, slower than your gentle already, then this time, even in the walking itself, you begin to radiate meta already. Yeah? You begin to radiate meta as you walk. Uh, this time, your attention is not on the body, but is in the heart area or in the mind, men, in your, as if like in, your fr in front of you. Then you read it. May, may I be free from harm and danger. May I be free from all this mental suffering. May the people around here be free from all the, the this one yeah? and all that. So again, when you come to the standing, also you do. So more or less, huh? It's like 50% of the time that you spend on meta. Okay? Uh, now, as you get better and better, when it, when it comes to this number four and number five, uh, this, is, this is more advanced level and pro level. <laughs> and this is my, my version, uh, you know? This is my version. But I honestly say uh, it is not easy to achieve 
really to number four, number five, it's not easy to achieve. This one, people have been done meta for a long period of time and they have done continuously meta. Then you perhaps you can come to number four, number five, you know. So, so don't gao gao. <laughs> Don't try to be a hero and you try to do number four, number five. Wait, nah. not to say your time won't come, but wait for a while. Huh? Hold on first. Huh? Now, 30% mindfulness, 70% meta. Now, here is that when you are doing one phase, you do one phase for, let's say, 15 minutes or so. Then after that, as you go into all the 45 minutes later, huh, you go into meta already. That means your mind, your face is slow and your meta can be quite continuous. Uh, con it can be very continuous, including standing and walking too. So this part here is not easy because that for, I mean, for the that, that yogi at that level, it's easy for them because that time the hindrances is not strong. The hindrances is not powerful. So they can do that. Uh, they could do that. Then when they do these things, when they do about 70% meta in this sense, then that time they can make the meta continuous, which is very good. Okay? So now, after that, you want to go pro level. Now, pro level, that means uh, the moment you start the walking on it, and then all meta, and your face uh, is already from gentle into a very slow face already. Very quickly, you already go into a slow face already, and you can able to maintain that slow face for an hour. And that time, uh, the, the meta there, uh, even uh, for those people who can actually go into jhana while walking or while standing also, with this. So, they can go into to the jhana level and so on. So if you are not there yet, don't, don't try to be a hero. Eh? Don't try to be that. Because if at number five, eh, if you if you build up, you think that you want to do meta, but your mindfulness is so weak, eh, then it's going to be difficult. Eh? In, in the other times, eh, we're going to talk about how the meta as you progress, maybe just for knowledge sake, lah, eh, about how until it becomes jhana also. That one another day. Huh? Now, since we so so this one hopefully is clear to all of you. Huh? So so I, I would say uh, you you start off with number one, number two, sometimes at number three a little bit. Number four you don't touch it. Number five you don't touch it. <laughs> number one, number two, number three. Yeah? Three also sometimes you see like uh, again, but number one, number two will be good for a lot of you. Yeah? Okay? Something like that. Now you see, why uh, Why do we want to, uh, just before we go, uh, just, just a quick one, just a quick one. Now it's already 10 o'clock already. You know, some people from from Queensland, uh, from Australia, they listen to us, uh, they're already 12 o'clock already, you know, at night, two hours in front of us. Anyway, why do we want to go through all this from, from I and finally to all beings and all in between? Uh? Because... Just to give you a, just to give you a, what is going to at the end of the meta, is that the jhana is going to be very different, okay? Just this is just for a bit knowledge, huh? Why do we need to do that? Uh, let me see, huh? Okay. This is just for knowledge sake. Huh? I don't think in this retreat, uh, anybody is going to go into first jhana or so, uh, So don't. <laughs> <laughs> we are not talking to that high, but just a knowledge sake. Now, when you talk about may I be free from harm and danger, and also maybe include that perhaps people around you here, when you achieve that jhana, if you use that as your development of your jhana, of your metta, and you develop, develop until you reach the first jhana, and then that first jhana will come called the first jhana of a third class. Okay, a jhana of a third class. When I say, say may day, uh, may day, that means you already expand it out further already. That means people towards the state or towards the whole uh, world uh, that is already, if you, if, if you use that as your platform and then you develop your metta until it becomes first jhana, then it's a jhana of a second class. Then when you use all things without exception, Without, without exception, without distance, then 
if you can consistently use that, then when it goes into the first genre, then it goes into the first genre of a first class. So too with the second genre or the third genre also. Yeah? Uh, that, that one with third jhana I mean in the sense of Abhidhamma jhana but in the sense of Sutta there is only one and two only okay but we don't going to look into that but the reason I want to tell you is that because of your expansion how you one person how the narrowness of your metta and how it become expand further and how it become without exception without limit without border it has got to do when you come into the jhana. And when it says when you come into the jhana and you can sustain that, uh, that also when it comes into the rebirth, uh, that has a different Brahma level. Uh. That time also we talk about it during in the Third Noble Truth because the beings, the, the Brahma that comes in as the that they arise from the first jhana also got three levels. How the three level comes in? Because let's say if they practice the metta, they practice the metta slightly differently. So that's why it goes into a different level of existence and different level of existence have a different lifespan. That is, that is the impact here. So that, that one, just to give you what is going to happen in the end. Huh? But in the meantime, don't worry about the jhana thing. It's still... Uh, cannot walk you want to run already you want to fly already learn to walk first uh, yeah. uh, then then here what is important you you understand how to do you understand how the how all this sorry uh, uh, this up here all these things uh, can be done smoothly once you can get it smoothly and then then we can talk about things further in the in the future all right okay so we, that's that's all about for tonight. Now tomorrow night again you come in. Tomorrow night we'll talk about um, we we'll talk about the everyday aspect of the meta. How you can able to arouse the everyday aspect of meta. Okay. Uh, then the next thing just before we go, those who are registered, especially the group B, the group B interview will start from Thursday. Thursday we don't have Dhamma talk, but at night, make sure you are free also. Huh? I do not know what time yet, but make sure that make sure you are free. Because of the group B, because the group B is quite big, the group B is divided into three parts, uh, three group. I further divide them into three group. Huh? I will let you know tomorrow further. Huh? You will divide them into group. So the first group will be on Thursday night. Second group will be on Saturday morning. Third group will be on Saturday night. Okay? Finish for group B. For group A, your your interview will start on Thursday also. That but then that one uh, that one I will arrange. Yeah? But anyway, we will tell you a little bit more on 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 the on tomorrow. Okay, so just to give you an I just to give you uh, what is going to happen. So so therefore, uh, make sure uh, from every night for this week, uh, from Monday to Sunday, uh, night also, make sure you're free, you know. <laughs> you're going to see me a lot. <laughs> Until Monday, first 10 days, you're, make sure that you're, you're this one. Is, because the first 10 days, there's a lot of yogis. And then after 10 days, things will be reduced. Uh, just like this meta, uh, they reduce, 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 reduce. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, then... Okay, then share merits already. Huh? It's quite late already. All right. <clears throat>